Yo guys, you will not believe what just happened. We just received this huge plot of land right next to the city that is a really upcoming, really booming city. They gave us this plot of land because the mayor watched my YouTube series, Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park, and he said, I need to hire this man to develop a theme park next to the city. But there is pretty crazy weather around here, so they asked if this theme park could be indoors. And I said, sure, I think we can make that happen. And then they also asked if it could be an ultimate theme park. And I said, you want me to make you guys the ultimate indoor theme park? And they said, absolutely. I said, what's my budget? And they said, we're paying for the whole park with cryptocurrency. The budget is unlimited. I was like, right on and I got to work. So this mall is going to have three major sections and a very large entrance. And then connecting the three major sections of this indoor theme park will be shopping malls, restaurants, and various places for the guests to hang out. That is the basic plan. Let's just go ahead and get to work. Also, real fast, quick little reminder, make sure you have hit that subscribe button beneath the video so you guys get notified when I post new videos of this series because it's going to take a lot of episodes to build this whole entire ultimate theme park because, as you guys know, I don't hold back. I pull no stops, and I have gotten much better at this game since the last time I've started a new theme park. So my energy is kind of scary. So we're starting off by building the entrance to the theme park, which is going to be a giant lobby. And I wanted this thing to have some height to it. I wanted the guests to be able to climb very high to the top floor and be able to look back and have a good view of their city. Okay, we have two floors at the moment, but this is definitely not high enough. We need a bit more elevation, so we're gonna go up another floor to the third story. And this is going to be a lookout of what is going to be known as the coaster pit but we're still not high enough so we're gonna go up to a fourth floor connecting up these paths and these staircases having a lot of symmetry because symmetry is good we're wrapping it around and this is the ultimate lookout if guests want to climb all the way to the top they will have a beautiful view of their city now i started digging out the terrain around the bottom paths because on the bottom floor I want the ground to be made entirely out of water because this opening room isn't supposed to be functional, it's supposed to be beautiful. And water is beautiful. Looks like we've built a gigantic alien. <laughs> but let's continue digging all this out. I'm not going to dig everything out right now, but just enough so we can understand what we're trying to create. And it's looking good, it's a lot of paths jumbled around let's fill these little sections with water there we go we have a floor made of water but we don't want too much grass in here either so let's go ahead and turn everything into concrete and it'll all smooth out as well there we go it looks a lot more man-made just around the whole entire building with concrete if we are gonna have grass indoors we'll add it selectively ourselves all right, so now that we have an infrastructure, let's begin constructing our building. Now, architecturally, my goal is to make this lobby very modern and simplistic with a lot of natural light. This whole entire indoor theme park is going to have a lot of natural light. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is ideas. Now, I have quite a few ideas myself because, you know, I'm an ideas guy, but I also wanna take in some of the audience ideas. So down in the comment section below, if you have anything that you would want to see in this indoor theme park, go ahead and put it in that comment section. I will be reading all the comments and I will be implementing lots of your guys' ideas throughout the park and I will give you credit as well. And feel free to let your imagination run wild because even though I try to make my builds somewhat realistic, this is still a video game. Physics aren't real, money's not real, safety's not real. So we can break outside the boundaries with our theme park more than theme parks in the real world. So give me your wildest fantasies and I will do my best to put them into this theme park for y'all. And also for clarification, this is my third official Planet Coaster series on YouTube. 
My first series is Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park, where I built literally the largest theme park I possibly could in Planet Coaster, and it took years. My second was Let's Build a Tiny Park, where I tried to build the most elaborate theme park I could on a small plot of land. And this is the third official series, Let's Build the Ultimate Indoor Theme Park. I like the other two series, but I honestly have a feeling this is going to be the best one yet, just because of how much better I am at the game now. Now I do have quite a bit of experience with this game at this point, so during the series, in the commentary, I'm going to share with you guys some tips and tricks I've learned to make building easier, because there is quite a bit of advice that makes building in this game so much easier. I think the biggest bit of advice I have to give is whenever you're building any structure, it is all within a specific building. And when you're in that building, you're stuck on a grid and you can't take things off of that grid. Well, I want you to know that at any point you can select multiple pieces of your building by holding the shift key. And then there's a button that allows you to split those pieces off of that building, which means you can separate it and put it on its own grid entirely and you can move those pieces around very precise using the advanced move tool, which if you place an object and press X, you can go into advanced move with one button and you can just move stuff around as precisely as you want. Knowing this information allows you to get off of the grid that lots of people get stuck on. Once you figure out how to get off this little grid, it makes things so much easier. But also the grid is really good too. With building certain buildings like what I'm building right now, I'm actually, for the most part, staying on the grid, and I'm only taking some pieces off every once in a while if I need to move them around just very precisely and line them up in a way that looks more natural, because sometimes the grid makes things look unnatural, and you have to take things off to make them more natural. Now I'm creating a centerpiece type of sculpture. It's supposed to be sort of like a modern piece of art to be in the very center of this gigantic room that I created. And what I did is I created a staggered checkered pattern and it's going to zigzag all the way up to the very top floor. And then in the future, we're going to light it up with different colors of lights and we're going to use the different grooves and shadowing of the zigzag to do like a kind of cool lighting effect on it. But the view of the entire theme park is going to be right behind this wall. So I had to build this so people couldn't see the theme park from the very front entrance. With the plans I have for this theme park, I wanted to build it so there was a reveal for the guests as they paid and entered. Now, I've built some pretty large buildings in Planet Coaster. I built a giant sci-fi complex and a giant castle in my ultimate theme park, but I've never built a building large enough to fit an entire theme park inside. So getting to the point where the scale of my builds is gonna be more massive is definitely another push for me as a builder because I want to make things look big, but also not repetitive. But it's important to keep in mind that it's okay for your builds to be boring at first, because you can always go back and add more detail later. Something cool we're going to do is we're going to have a monorail track run straight over the entrance through this building. That way we can add some motion to this lobby to make it a bit more lively. And I'm not going to connect up the track yet. It's not going to be functional, but I'm just marking off where the monorail is going to be. Every once in a while, it's good to go into first person mode and just take a little fly through to see what you've built so far. And I felt like those doors are a little bit low, so let's raise them up a little bit more. Let's open it up. Freaking air it out, man. Air it out. Now, as you guys are going to see, I definitely am a crazy person when it comes to decoration. I spend way more time decorating than building rides, quite frankly, but... I think that's how you build the most iconic theme parks is when you focus a bit more on the decoration because that's what really pulls it all together. The scenery is the glue of a theme park. Also as a side note, if you represent some sort of brand and you want to sponsor this indoor theme park and have some billboards for your brand in this virtual theme park, email me at my management email and we can work out some sort of offer for me to advertise your brand or product in this theme park. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sponsor myself in a weird way. Along with making YouTube videos, I also make music underneath the artist name Lil Tall. And I'm going to go ahead and have this theme park sponsored by Lil Tall as well. I'm going to put some Lil Tall billboards in this park later. And if you guys want to support the music, you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, and on YouTube under the artist name Lil Tall.
L-A-L space T-A-L-L. I recommend you look up the song Jaguar or I Can't Get You Off My Mind. I think those are two of my favorites right now. Okay, so as far as indoor theme parks are concerned, there isn't that much competition. There's a few indoor theme parks that are pretty cool out there, but there's nothing too insane. So what we're going to be building in this series is going to transcend anything that exists in real life, which is like one of the coolest things about it. Currently, the biggest indoor theme park in the world would be Nickelodeon Universe, which is in the Mall of America in Minnesota, and that's in the U.S. And I have been there a few times as a kid, and I also went there when I was a bit older. At the same time, I went to Minnesota for SGDQ, Summer Games Done Quick. A group of us went to Mall of America. And I also shot a music video there with my friend Simply, who's a Mario 64 speedrunner and rapper. <laughs> we filmed a music video for a song by Lil Tall and Simply called You Got a Moon at Mall of America. <laughs> and Mall of America is a really cool indoor theme park, and I love Nickelodeon. I grew up on Nickelodeon cartoons, and so I love the theming of having a Nickelodeon universe. And maybe we can put a little Nickelodeon universe inside our indoor theme park as well, because there is quite a bit of Nickelodeon scenery on the Theme Maker's Toolkit, like custom scenery that was uploaded by the community. I know for a fact I have scenery for Avatar The Last Airbender, and I also know for sure there's Spongebob scenery. So maybe we can make something happen if you know what I'm saying. So a lot of construction is underworks. I'm putting up gigantic large walls dividing the staircases. These are some pretty intense staircases. Hopefully nobody falls while going up or down them. If they do, it's okay, they're virtual people. Unless, unless people in simulations do, maybe we're in a simulation. It might actually be serious. I'm also going to build some ramps leading up to this upper section on a different part of the building but these stairs are just here for convenience. If they ever release Planet Coaster 2, I would love for them to add elevators and escalators. I think that would just make things a little bit more realistic when building structures like hotels or potential lookout towers. I mean, think about Universal Studios in Hollywood. That place is made out of escalators. So just building walls and then putting gigantic columns to use as supports to really give the structure some strength, I think can really sell the build and make it feel pulled together. Okay, so on my last theme park series, one comment that I usually got was, I really wish that they could build this theme park in real life. And I was like really thinking about it, and I was like, with crowdfunding existing now, how come we can't build a virtual theme park and then use crowdfunding to actually get it built in real life? Through the combination of getting online contributions and pre-selling online passes for people to go once the park opens, I feel like it would actually be really possible to fund one of these big theme parks. I did the math and it would probably cost around $750 million to build a giant theme park like the one I'm going to be building in this series. And if we could get 1 million people to donate an average of $750, which is a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, 1 million people when brought together collectively on the internet for something really big, like it could actually happen if you think about it. I think there was like a space simulation game that rose $500 million on Kickstarter. And I'm like, what? A simulation video game rose that much money? That's like literally how much money it would cost to build a gigantic theme park. I'm like, damn, this better be the best freaking space simulation game ever created. Now with the scope of the stuff I'm building for these series, it would probably cost more than $750 million to build the park. But I feel like $750 million would be enough to get the park started. And then from there you open up and you do business and then you make more money, maybe get more contributions and you continue expanding and building more stuff. And I feel like I've seen crazier things happen on the internet, so <laughs> a freaking theme park being crowdfunded in 2023, I could see it happening. <laughs> now I got pretty detailed with the staircase sections, and one of the things I struggled with was making it symmetrical, because they're pretty complex shapes, and I was just like, gotta make it match. I'm very particular about this stuff, and I, I kept on going back and forth and checking. 
So far, I'm really liking the way the modern aesthetic is looking. It looks really clean and sharp, and the shapes look very nice. And this big zigzag centerpiece is just, mm, it's one of my favorite parts so far. Oh man, building a park that's totally indoors is going to be a lot of extra work. <laughs> Everything is going to be encapsulated, but I'm ready for the task. I've built myself up for this. I've gotten my practice in and I'm committed to following this through. These things I'm placing right here are gonna be the entry points. This is where the guests officially enter the park, the place where they turn in their ticket. Now you're for sure gonna to wanna to make it to episode two because we are going to start building the coaster pit, which is gonna be the first main room or dome of our indoor theme park. Now, thank you to all the people who asked for this series and who asked for more Planet Coaster content. I hope this series is worth your wait. I'm really going to try to provide for you guys because of how supportive you guys were for the other series. Having your guys' engagement with the video really actually helps me want to work on them more because it adds a bit more of a human element, which pulls me and attracts me to making the videos more. So if you want me to make more of these videos, just interact with me in the comments below and just show some love. I, it's all really appreciated. Wait, what is this? What is this? They're coming. The people are coming. Oh no. Where? Where? Ah.